Hello, I am Anne Hendricks from Ghent University and Cancer Research Institute Ghent in Belgium. In this MOOC presentation, I will explain the use of density gradient ultracentrifugation to prepare extracellular vesicles from biofluids. First, I will give a general overview on density gradient ultracentrifugation. What is it and what is it used for? Thereafter, I will explain how to start with this method, how to check its performance and which quality controls should be considered. Next, I will discuss the data reporting, the do's and don'ts, and some good examples of density gradient ultracentrifugation that have been reported in literature. Finally, I will also give an outlook on some future developments. Density gradient ultracentrifugation separates particles based on biome density and or size, depending upon the setup of the density gradient. Density gradients are prepared by layering dilutions of a density medium of varying density and viscosity from the bottom to the top in an ultracentrifuge tube. Density media that are typically used to prepare gradients are iodixanol and sucrose. The viscosity of the gradient defines particle rate sedimentation. The density of the gradient defines particle positioning. Density gradient ultracentrifugation allows to separate extracellular vesicles from other non-vesicular extracellular particles that are present in the biofluid of interest, such as lipoprotein particles or ribonucleoprotein complexes. In addition, density gradient ultracentrifugation can be used to separate subpopulations of extracellular vesicles based upon size, and or density characteristics. For example, Kowal and co-workers use this method to separate lights and dense subpopulations of extracellular vesicles from medium conditioned by dendritic cells. Tokens and co-workers demonstrated the applicability of density gradient ultracentrifugation to separate human extracellular vesicles from bacterial extracellular vesicles in blood plasma. Different setups for density gradient ultracentrifugation can be used, including rate zonal density gradient ultracentrifugation, also referred to as velocity density gradient ultracentrifugation, and isopicnic density gradient ultracentrifugation, also referred to as equilibrium density gradient ultracentrifugation. Both setups have their own characteristics and applications. Isopicnic density gradient ultracentrifugation is typically used to separate particles based upon equilibrium density, whereas rate zonal density gradient ultracentrifugation separates particles based upon size. Independent of the setup, density gradients are prepared by layering dilutions of a density medium of progressively decreasing density and viscosity from the bottom to the top in an ultracentrifuge tube. Different biofluids require different approaches regarding the setup of the density gradient, the sample loading approach, the top or the bottom loading, the choice of the density range, as well as the centrifugation time and speed. Density gradient ultracentrifugation is compatible with different starting materials, including conditioned cell culture medium, blood plasma, urine, stool, and milk. The setup of density gradient ultracentrifugation is defined by the biofluid of interest. For example, the sample loading approach, the top loading or a bottom loading, depends on other non-vesicular extracellular particles that are present in the biofluid of interest. Pre-processing steps can be required. In practice, density gradient ultracentrifugation is commonly used in combination with other methods. For example, a concentration step using ultrafiltration or pre precipitation to reduce the volume and make it compatible with the loading on a density gradient, 
and or a combination with an enrichment step, including size exclusion chromatography or differential ultracentrifugation, for example. In the following slides, I will discuss some highlighted examples for rate zonal and isopicnic density gradient ultracentrifugation. In the first example, Geurix and co-workers applied a rate zonal density gradient ultracentrifugation to separate subpopulations of extracellular vesicles residing in medium condition by HEC293 T cells expressing the HIV1 GEC protein. Cell culture conditioned medium was collected, concentrated to 1 ml by ultrafiltration, and loaded on top of a iodixanol density gradient with a short density range. Upon centrifugation at approximately 190,000 G for two hours, HIV-1 GEC positive extracellular vesicles that are higher in mass were separated from HIV-1 GEC negative extracellular vesicles. In the second example, we will have a closer look to isopicnic density gradient ultracentrifugation, which separates particles based upon their equilibrium density. This schematic illustrates the equilibrium density of extracellular vesicles and non-vesicular extracellular particles in blood plasma. At equilibrium, lower density lipoprotein particles such as LDL and kilomicrons are predominantly enriched in the top fractions of the density gradient. Extracellular vesicles and high density lipoprotein particles are enriched in the middle fractions of the density gradient, and protein aggregates or protein complexes are enriched at the bottom fractions of the density gradient. For isopicnic density gradient ultracentrifugation, the sample loading approach, so a top loading or a bottom loading, depends on other non-vesicular extracellular particles in the biofluid of interest. For blood plasma, a top-down density gradient is preferred. After 18 hours of centrifugation at 100,000 G, extracellular vesicles and lipoprotein particles will migrate to their corresponding buoyant densities. This results in a depletion of abundantly present lower density lipoprotein particles from extracellular vesicles. For urine, a bottom-up approach is more desirable. The urine sample is diluted in a medium with a higher density until the desired percentage in the bottom fraction is achieved. Next, the gradient is built on top of the bottom fraction. After 18 hours of centrifugation at 100,000 G, extracellular vesicles and tam horsfall protein complexes will migrate to their corresponding buoyant densities. This results in a depletion of abundantly present tam horsfall protein complexes from extracellular vesicles. Van Deun and co-workers demonstrated the performance of density gradient ultracentrifugation to separate extracellular vesicles from other non-vesicular extracellular particles in cell culture conditioned medium. Ribonucleoprotein complexes characterized by Argonaut 2 protein are efficiently separated from extracellular vesicles characterized by TSG101. Bergouwen and co-workers demonstrated the performance of density gradient ultracentrifugation to separate extracellular vesicles from lipoprotein particles in blood plasma. High-density lipoproteins, characterized by apolipoprotein A1, are efficiently separated from extracellular vesicles characterized by flotlin 1. Although in these two examples, extracellular vesicles have reached their equilibrium density of one, approximately 1.1 gram per ml, ribonucleoprotein complexes and high-density lipoprotein particles that are smaller in size have not yet reached their equilibrium density. As a consequence, they are still retained in the top fractions of the density gradient. 
Tont and co-workers demonstrated that density gradient ultracentrifugation separates urinary extracellular vesicles characterized by LX, TSG101, and CD9 from TAM horsefall protein complexes that are retained at their equilibrium density in the bottom fractions of the gradient. Different density media can be used to prepare the density gradient. The choice of density medium depends on multiple parameters, including the density range, the use of a continuous versus uh, discontinuous density gradients, and downstream applications. In this table, an overview is shown of the different density media that are available. Eodixanol and sucrose are the most used density media for extracellular vesicle research. Eodixanol is self-forming, in contrast to sucrose, which is used to establish discontinuous gradients. Eodixanol has a low viscosity and is isoosmotic, while sucrose has a high viscosity and high osmolality. After density gradient ultracentrifugation, multiple density-based fractions are obtained. The fractions are typically collected by carefully pipetting one and all fractions from the top to the bottom of the ultracentrifuge tube. Make sure to carefully pipette close to the meniscus to avoid disruption of the gradient during fraction collection. Extracellular vesicles can be analyzed directly in the density fractions after dilution in physiological buffers, for example, for flow cytometry analysis or nanoparticle tracking analysis. However, for certain downstream applications, the concentration of extracellular vesicles in the gradient fractions or removal of the density media may be required, for example, for functional studies or omics approaches. Size exclusion chromatography or differential ultracentrifugation, but also ultrafiltration and precipitation can be used to concentrate the density fractions or to remove density media from the extracellular vesicle preparations. The time required to perform density gradient ultracentrifugation varies between 2 and 90 hours. The duration of the protocol actually depends on the setup of the density gradient ultracentrifugation procedure. Rate zonal density gradient ultracentrifugation is typically shorter compared to isopicnic density gradient ultracentrifugation, which requires particles to reach their equilibrium density. Gradient preparation and fraction collection can be performed with automated liquid handlers to increase reproducibility and reduce the hands-on time. However, the method is not scalable to industrial or clinical laboratories as the throughput is overall rather low and restricted by, of course, the use of an ultracentrifuge. To assess the performance of density gradient ultracentrifugation, different performance metrics can be used. First performance metric defines purity, which is the ratio between extracellular vesicles and non-vesicular extracellular components that are present in the preparation. Recovery is defined by the percentage of total extracellular vesicles that are preserved after implementing the separation method. Enrichment is defined by the ratio of the purity in extracellular vesicles obtained before and after separation. Overall, density gradient ultracentrifugation separates extracellular vesicles with higher purity but lower recovery. Density gradient ultracentrifugation efficiently depletes non-vesicular extracellular particles that differ in size and density from other extracellular vesicles, as demonstrated in the highlighted examples. However, for blood plasma, the recovery efficiency of density gradient ultracentrifugation is reported to be around 30 to 40%. 
This is higher compared to the recovery efficiency of differential ultracentrifugation, which varies between 5 and 10% for blood plasma, but lower compared to the recovery efficiency of size exclusion chromatography, which is 60% or higher. However, size exclusion chromatography is unable to resolve extracellular vesicles from lower density lipoprotein particles, kilomicrons, and protein aggregates that overlap in size. Density gradient ultracentrifugation enriches extracellular vesicles by 100 to 500 fold compared to proteins and by 1,800 to 2,100 fold compared to apolipoprotein B and apolipoprotein A1 positive lipoprotein particles. In order to ensure the quality of the extracellular vesicle separation, multiple controls can be taken into account when working with density gradient ultracentrifugation. First of all, it's important to measure the density of the different gradient fractions using a refractometer or absorbance spectrophotometry. It's important also to characterize the different density fractions to discriminate extracellular vesicles from non-extracellular vesicle enriched fractions. In order to claim that a specific biomarker or function is primarily associated with extracellular vesicles, comparison between extracellular vesicle and non-extracellular vesicle enriched fractions can help to identify which proportion of the biomarker or function is associated with each of the density fractions. Reference extracellular vesicles can be used to define the optimal density gradient ultracentrifugation procedure. And finally, of course, the MICEF guidelines can be followed to characterize, quantify, and describe extracellular vesicle preparations that have been obtained with density gradient ultracentrifugation from the biofluid of interest. The implementation of density gradient ultracentrifugation requires adequate reporting to allow interpretation and reproducibility of the data. Different parameters should be reported, including the density, density media, the composition of the layers and their respective volumes, the sample loading and ultracentrifugation specifics such as centrifugation time, speed and the rotor type used. The use of the EVTrack knowledge base is encouraged to facilitate transparent reporting of such parameters. Also avoid reporting density fractions without density specification, as this will limit the reproducibility of the data. Now, what should you consider when you start density gradient ultracentrifugation? Density gradient ultracentrifugation is highly dependent on pipetting skills, so practice is really required. The use of appropriate controls, such as reference extracellular vesicles, can guide this practice and further help to optimize the procedure for your particular biofluid of interest. It's also important to make sure that both the gradient but also the sample are cooled to avoid temperature-induced variations in the gradient. Make sure to homogenize the gradient solutions before pipetting. Also, proper homogenization of the collected fractions for downstream applications is crucial. The use of low affinity binding tubes to collect and store the density fractions may help to reduce the loss of extracellular vesicles or increase the recovery efficiency. And also the use of swinging bucket rotors is recommended to achieve a proper separation of particles. What should you not do when implementing density gradient ultracentrifugation? Of course, avoid any vibrations or shakings that may disturb the gradient, and so also the localization of the particles in the gradient, and also avoid to use or to implement the procedure without prior practice and validation of the protocol. 
Good examples of density gradient ultra centrifugation that have been used and reported in literature for different biofluids are listed in this slide and available for you for further follow-up if you want to read into and start to implement the procedure. Now, which future developments can further improve the overall performance and implementation of density gradient ultracentrifugation? Well, first of all, one of the important improvements to consider is to try to increase the recovery efficiency of extracellular vesicles. Of course, this is the result of a trade-out between um, specificity that is achieved by density gradient ultracentrifugation, which results in a reduced efficiency, but maybe by um, using different types of buffers or different types of low binding um, plastic containers, recovery can be further increased. As the method is also highly technically demanding, it may benefit from advances in automatic liquid handling, to stimulate or to enable gradient preparation and fraction collection, which will ultimately contribute to the high throughput implementation and also the reproducibility of the procedure. And since density gradient fraction Ultracentrifugation allows the fractionation of different subpopulations of extracellular vesicles. It is, of course, an excellent tool to investigate the heterogeneity in extracellular vesicles across different biofluids. In addition, considering that density gradient ultracentrifugation prepares extracellular vesicles with high specificity, it is a highly promising method to further stimulate biomarker discovery and gain insights in the functions of extracellular vesicles. In conclusion, density gradient ultracentrifugation is compatible with different types of starting materials and is commonly used in combination with concentration and enrichment steps to separate extracellular vesicles with a high specificity from other non-physicular extracellular particles, as well as to fractionate different subpopulations of extracellular vesicles. This is achieved by exploiting differences in density and or size between extracellular vesicles and non-physicular extracellular particles. Optimization of the density gradient ultracentrifugation procedure, including the setup, the centrifugation time and speed, is needed and depends on the biofluid of interest and the aim of the experiment. With that, I would like to thank my lab members for helpful discussions while preparing this presentation, and thank you for your attention.